what is Jessie Wu doing with her career? Like, what does she want to do? And could she be doing anything else <laughs> than giving blog takes on YouTube, on Twitter? If you want to, you know, discuss this, let's begin. Hi, I'm Q, and welcome to The Blueprint, a series where I take people through the process of ideating and coming up with concepts that could apply to their audience, a series that was born out of my frustration of seeing strange at best, duplicitous at worst, actions. It didn't make any sense to me. Content creators and influencers who have distribution power and access in ways that others will just not should hopefully have the ability to come up with some interesting ideas that can carry them into the future. I always say this, but if you are somebody mentioned in this video, either you're a talent manager, creator, or business, and you have questions, inquiries, some might say, reach out to me in the comment description, comment relax description box below. <laughs> If you like anything you're about to see in this video, in any capacity, my hair, my makeup, my voice, please comment. I love reading comments. And with that, let's begin. Can we get a round of applause to the editor? I'm about to put my photo. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So yes, that's my official trailer for the blueprint. Um, I've been working on more and more blueprint videos and this is kind of something that, I don't know, original content, <laughs> something that I do. Um, and I think I will talk more about it at the end of the video. Timestamps are in the description box below, hopefully. So with that, let's begin. What is Jessie Wu doing with her career? Could she be doing anything else? I, I've spent a lot of time kind of doing research on her, her singing, her vocals, her bouts in entertainment, love and hip hop. And it's just kind of confusing, to be honest. And we're not even here to talk about her history. You, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, we're not even here to give, I'm not here to give really a synopsis on who she is, um, or, or more so to go in depth, but just to give a brief kind of who is Jessie Wu. Jessie Wu, I would consider her an entertainer um, who can sing, she can sing, she can vocalize, she can write, um, and, and she's a personality. She's a personality. She's what I feel like Sweetie at times... <laughs> not like could be doing with her time instead of this like quote unquote rapping that she does. I feel like Sweetie could be doing anything else to be honest. Um, but that's another conversation for another day. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much who Jessie Boo is. And I've just been spending some time thinking like, wow, like this all seems very discombobulated. <laughs> What does she want to do? Is it that maybe she's not getting the sort of contract or deals that she wants to sign? And then, of course, I did some research on the podcast that had ended with her friends. And she said from her mouth that, you know, there were just some business things that were not working out. Some people that she had gotten into bed with doing the podcast, they were not serious. And it ended. It ended. And people really had amazing reception to that. So let's kind of discuss my idea and my pitch. So because I was doing all this research and I just concluded, I was like, dang, like, I know that there are things that she wants to do in music, but I feel like she's meandering through other things within entertainment, either because she's not able to figure out the deal and because I'm not really privy to why she doesn't want to just mainly focus on music and only do music. I think this is something that she could pursue. So welcome to the blueprint. Let's ideate. So I believe with Jesse Wu's connections in the entertainment industry with C-list and B-list and a few A-list actors, as well as her accessibility to people in entertainment, in entertainment production, such as events and programming, I believe that Jesse Wu could facilitate a series of meet and greet events. Okay, let's, that's a sentence. <laughs> I think that Jessie Wu could become a facilitator for hosting and putting on meet and greet events for B-list and C-list celebrities. And I think that because of her quote unquote credibility over like the social media person, like a TikToker, I believe that she could also facilitate meet and greets for TikTokers as well. Like, do you know what I mean? Like she's a step above, like she's in traditional entertainment and she has access to the people who can put on these sort of events. She has the leverage. She has the ability to say, not only am I like a parasocial character, but I've been in traditional entertainment. I've been around these production sets. I know these producers. I know these event hosts. I know these celebrities. They're my friends. 
that is the leverage point that I think Jesse Wu has. And the reason why I specifically touch on also the social media actors and like the social media people as well, almost more, like even more, like over like the B list and the C list actors and like entertainers and music artists is because I feel like with her being able to be in that mix of being around like maybe a TikToker and helping facilitate their meet and greet, whether it's physical or digital, I believe that she's going to be able to leverage the fact that they have distribution to continue to keep herself relevant and to also remove the risk and and kind of like the tone that comes with her talking about day-to-day things that happen on social media. You know what I mean? It's like sometimes people talk about Sky Jackson and they're like, why, you know, like, why is she on YouTube? Like, you know what I mean? Like, why, <laughs> why not like pick up traditional gigs? And as I'm sure you guys know, a lot of traditional um, actors and actresses, musicians, entertainers have been trying to get on these platforms, TikTok, um, YouTube, Twitch, etc., to develop more of the parasocial, I think, connections that they need to stay relevant for longer. You know, people do not feel people do not really feel connected to people within entertainment because they don't know them. They don't have access to these people at all. But people who make TikTok videos, people who make YouTube videos are a lot more accessible in a parasocial interaction. So much so that you can take parasocial interactions and people can push, people can really, really push your career. Are you guys following me? Okay. (laughs) So I think that with this strategy, Jessie Wu, (laughs) and I don't know anything really, I don't know the intimate details obviously of like her management team or like people who help her with her like biz ops, but I I do almost feel like she should scale back on talking about local, I kind of want to say quote unquote local commentary. I kind of don't want to see her doing like YouTube videos talking about things happening on Twitter. And not that I don't want to hear her thoughts. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that she doesn't have thoughts on this, but I'm like, is there a way that you can be in that mix of orating and talking and and saying the things that you want, but not in this format? Or can you put yourself around people that you can reduce the amount of times that you have to talk in this format while also seemingly maintaining relevance? The third reason why I think coming into like this event production space of meet and greets, whether she facilitates this, whether she's like a host and she does this physically or digitally, is that I also just feel that Jessie Wu is extremely talented. (laughs) She's extremely, extremely talented. And so not only by reducing the risk of kind of I'm here, I'm kind of doing this blog thing and that's cool, but maybe people can start to associate her more of, if you wanna put on like production, if you wanna have your fans interact with you in certain types of ways, in a certain type of energy, she can be that go-to person. The fourth reason why I believe that this is a good idea for Jessie Wu is because she doesn't know what she wants to do. And I think that that's risky because how many times have I kind of discussed on this this you know channel, like through lives and through other videos, the TikTok managers, TikTokers, you need to fire your manager. Most of you, you need to fire your manager. If you need someone to help you get brand deals, maybe just have that, but you should probably be looking for someone to help you do development. I also talk about this a little bit in the Megan The Stallion video. Like, does she need new A&R? Like, what is going on with the development? What is going on with the development, really? Um, and obviously, um, this and that, they're not the same. Megan The Stallion is obviously not the same as like a TikToker. You know what I mean? I, but I've discussed this idea before about this, this idea of where are we going with this outside of today, outside of the timeline, outside of the updates, where are we going? Outside of six months from now, where are we going with this? And because Jessie Wu is not in a position where for whatever reason, she's not really solidifying things that maybe she really wants to do, even though I feel like maybe she doesn't know what she wants to do. And that's why she's kind of trying everything, even though obviously we know she's extremely talented in many facets. I think this can help her solidify. I obviously also think the reason why she does videos and they get the sort of views that they do, like they support her. There have been YouTubers that have talked about how if you see YouTubers that are getting about, it's like a hundred thousand per video. And I think hers, it could range anywhere from like 25, 22,000, sometimes to 167,000. You know, they are getting about $10,000 a month just on like AdSense. This is like a rough estimate, but yes, it's been confirmed. You know, you get around 100,000 views per video and maybe you have like two or three of these videos a month. 
you can easily pull in about 10 to maybe $15,000. So obviously I know that this is a money play for her as well, but I'm like, wh why not try something else? I am working on a blueprint video <laughs> for <laughs> Miami. <laughs> um, I'm working on a video for her because she does a lot of these live streams on IGTV. And I'm just like, IGTV, it's like, it's like even this one TikTok I'm thinking of, she got, she, she did these like talent shows, 40,000 people on a live. What are we doing here on IG Live? <laughs> I like, what is going on? If it's that we kind of need some sort of buffer point to kind of explore other things, why not use Twitch? Like, why not use an infrastructure or platform where you can monetize? Why don't you have maybe these like public chats? Like, even like for Miami, I'm thinking like, I'm, I'm literally thinking like, you could have these like paid like quote unquote Dr. Phil kind of sessions. Everybody can just come into your show and take a seat. You know what I mean? Let's talk about the person who's not gonna buy me pizza, you know, buy more than one pan of pizza because my friends are here. Like, you know, so entertaining. And that's kind of what I'm thinking of, Jesse Wu. I'm thinking of how can you stretch in the long term? So I did mention a mixture of digital and physical event programming. But as you guys know, like even with the luxury travel space, it is completely, it's going to boom in the next three, two to three years. In the next like one to three years, luxury travel industry is going to boom. Event space, events, physical events are going to boom. The whole industry is going to pop its head off. Music concerts, absolutely gonna boom. Everybody's been securing these contracts. <laughs> Everybody has been solidifying these contracts. In fact, I had heard from somebody behind the scenes, and this is something I think came out publicly that Beyonce was in talks of doing a residency in Las Vegas, and that's huge money huge money. I also want to make another video on why I feel like a lot of like top artists did not come out with music this year and I have thoughts on like why. And I and I know I'm not the only person to to talk about this. Editing me here. Literally, I called it. As told by Kenya made a so a very interesting video about what is the music industry looking like in 2021? And I swear like in 14 minutes in, she literally says the same thing. She says I don't think, I think the reason why some of these larger artists weren't putting out music in 2021 is like, what is touring going to look like? What is that going to look like? Why should I do it this year? Really? Okay, back to the edit video editing cue. Okay, go ahead. So that is kind of something that I'm thinking of making a video on and... I just feel like we need to discuss it more. So right now, digital, she will still be able to leverage that now, as we know, to keep everybody safe. And people still want these kind of further parasocial relationships, private events, that she would be able to use her quote unquote credibility, even though she's not like an A-list actress or anything like that, but she can leverage what she has, as well as her inner connections and production contacts. But then when things start to open up again, she can parlay that to the physical event planners and hosters that she knows and say, yo, we should do a series of niche meet and greets for these set of people. Let's work on putting that on. Let's do a revenue split deal and let's get this going. So this is, I think, going to be a brief one. I just wanted to break this down. I, 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 I wanna ask you guys, if you made it this far, Put like, put like a money bag, put like a money bag emoji or like a money emoji. Like, what do you think Jesse Wu could do? Or like, even like a microphone emoji, because it seems that she's just not really ready to settle on music for whatever that is. And we could talk about the love and hip hop industrial complex and how do people's careers really benefit by even going on these types of shows? Like, are you able to, to like, are you really, are these people really giving you what you need to parlay into that, that, that avenue? You know, there's something to say about the idea of having a stand, having like a community that really is obsessed with your work and obsessed with you, I think is what middle artists are really going to need if they don't want to be like larger artists, which we know are only the few and far between. The few and far between. I think you guys know this. Like, I, th I believe it's like 95% of people who make music, publish music, distribute music are independent artists. It is really the Stan community. So I, I really think that she is in a very good sweet spot here, a really, really solid sweet spot here to parlay on both sides, to get in the mix, to have something that's stronghold that stays and carries her into the future, to give her some time to breathe, but then she can do anything she wants. 
And now she continues to develop these relationships with these TikTokers, with the people who are really popular on these IG lives. People want to see, people want to talk to exclusively. People want to have more like, no, I want to ask you a question. People are willing to pay for that. Now people have her in her address book. This is kind of somewhere where I see the creator economy going. I hate that word, actually. I really do hate that word. I don't really like that word. I think it's a buzzword. But in terms of the people who make content and good work, and where do I see kind of that portion of the entertainment and like media industry going? I think that if you're not able to build infrastructure, like if you don't build like apps, for example, even though you, you're going to be competing with a lot of people, if you don't do that, then I think like the money is in the people who make the work and the content and helping them do that helping them distribute more of that, helping them monetize that, I think is actually probably gonna be more important, more important. And also this way, like if Jessie Wu does something like this, she doesn't need to depend on like a TikToker who's here today and gone tomorrow because people know she used to do this. She does this. She puts on these events. She facilitates these meet and greets. She hosts, she's very energetic. She has a, such a good like personality, very good like oration personality. <laughs> personality <laughs> and so people know like okay if you want to get a host you want to get people to not only host but facilitate these sort of meet and greets she's a person to go to continuous relevance so that is my blueprint for jesse Wu. who's next ah, tbd tbd as you guys know i was in the process of finishing up some videos um for example i want to talk about <laughs> damon dominique and his former, you know, co-host and them falling out and her and, and you know, you guys know her name. Um, She got a Netflix show. I kind of have been working on a blueprint video on how I feel like she should have never signed that deal without Damon Dominique. I'm having thoughts. I'm having thoughts. I've been doing some research. I'm like, I don't know. What do you do? I, I even had a question where I was like doing some research into like Damon Dominique and like what was going on there. And I, I just was like, you know, what would you do if you pitched a show to Netflix, both of you, someone who, you, both of you as a team, let's say you had a team, you had a friend and you guys made amazing content, especially, you know, like your partner, like this friend, this friend is really interesting. People really like their, their energy. I, I, I noticed, I really noticed. And I'm just like, what would you do if you pitch a show to Netflix and they say, oh, we want you, but not you. Thoughts? That's okay. Put an emoji question mark if you made it this far. Okay, here, so here are some announcements for the announcements. I want to say thank you so much. Thank you so much for your patience. Um, thank you so much for your support. This is this is so fun. This is so 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 fun, and I'm I'm super excited. Um, I'm going to bring more of the lives back. What's going to happen is, as you guys know, if you don't know this and you're new to this channel, I have been. I've been battling with some, not deadlines, battling, oh my gosh. Um, I have some deadlines coming up. And so I have some serious, serious deadlines coming up. And so I should, it should start to slow down, I would say by the third week of July. So like, so by like maybe July 24th, which I think is a Saturday, I, my schedule like opens up. Um, so I'm just so super busy. Um, I'm super, super busy. So that's kind of what's going on. So I want to bring the lives back. But I, I more so, I want to put out more blueprints. <laughs> I kind of want to test this out. I've gotten some really interesting feedback about these blueprint videos. And I've just been thinking, how do I want to move forward with these? Um, as you guys know, it takes a lot of like resources and time. For example, the Lydia Dinga one, like I literally have to, like sometimes like outside of doing market research, outside of maybe asking people who like own these companies, like, you know what I mean? Like I'm reaching into like my network. Do you understand? Like, um, I, I think I even made like a mock-up just because like I wanted to design something something because I was like what could like a Prosecco what could like a wine club look like for her and like doing something like that takes time um it takes time and of course I have to do some research <laughs> I have to do research not just the market research but research on these people like I, I need to do research on Jesse Wu why did the podcast bust like why did the podcast go to hell like you know what I mean like what is going on with Damon Dominique like, and at first I thought I was gonna make a video for those two separately but now I'm like actually no like knowing what I know about what was going on with that Netflix show I'm like actually no so not only have I now watched both of y'all's content and I know that Damon Dominique is perceived better and people like his personality better and Netflix was like well really I don't want to do this show with Damon so it's either you or, and then of course they ended up falling out. Like, I just like, this is a bad move. Like, you know what I mean? Like Damon Dominique is getting, am I shouting? Damon Dominique is like getting like 130 to about half a million views per video. People really love the stuff that he does. I really feel like they should have found a way to work it out. 
but what do I, but what do I say about traditional entertainment? You know, what, what do I say about the ways in which like people, not everybody's going to get this opportunity. And so you should maybe think if, if, if you still want to be in content and have that as like a business play, then maybe you should think about different ways to go about it. And I have some thoughts on Damon Dominique. When you have content and you have eyeballs, you can, you can whip up a pitch. You can whip up a pitch. So thank you so much for, if you made it this far, oh my God, put a fruit emoji. Mwah, mwah. Thank you so much. You guys are so sweet. Yes, put any fruit. My fruit of today, I think is banana. That's what I, I want to make pancakes. So <laughs> banana, strawberries. Oh my gosh, berries. Cause I have like sparkling water. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in another one of my tapes. Oh, and I'm just like blushing. Okay, bye.